uh, when we're doing these things and be, make sure all our uh, P's and Q's are, are there. So um, that's it. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I look forward to this Q&A. I'm sure I'm going to learn a ton and uh, probably alter my, my form when I get back after hearing some of these questions. Thank you. Seats available, so those of you around the room, if you can find some empty seats, I see about five of them, so please feel free to get in position. Thanks. And Stephanie, thank you. Welcome. Um, so, Lynn, said, Lynn told you guys a little bit about why I'm here, and, and I'll just um, reiterate that after 14 years of real estate sales and management experience, I thought that I might know a little something um, about property management as well. Um, but I'm here to tell you, no, no, I did not. Um, I was asked to manage our Lake Norman Realty property management department. That department, um, on average, retains about 220, 250 managed properties um, at any given time, with about 70, 75 actives available in inventory. So it's a high volume. Um, boy, that's a learning curve. Um, the risk in property management is very, very high. Um, higher even than we in the sales have experienced. So um, the first point I'm going to piggyback, um, just, it just sort of occurred to me when you were talking, Frazier, and that is that um, in addition to all of the contingencies that Fraser just covered with regard to all of the items that we would need to have addressed in a lease purchase, also, there are conflicting obligations on the part of the um, owner slash seller and buyer slash tenant that should you, against all good advice and training, um, decide that it's awful tempting to put together an offer to purchase and marry it to a lease form, you will run into not only a ton of the contingencies not covered, but also, and probably even more importantly, some conflicting obligations on the part of both of those parties that, you know, maybe you can skim over upon the first reading, but when the rubber meets the road and those situations come to pass, um, you'll be in a whole mess of trouble. So um, that, that was a great presentation, and thank you. Uh, the contingencies were well outlined, um, but I did just want to add that there are some, also some really big dangers just with what's not covered. Um, now, let's talk about rentals a little bit. Um, I'm only going to talk for about 10 minutes, and um, the main point that I, that I want to make to you guys today is we've all, as sales agents, been um, put in a position uh, recently um, with the downturn in the market where our sellers have either at the time that we've taken the listing um, to market it for sale or at later on in the listing um, term, we've been asked to um, also market that property for rent. And um, prior to this past July, um, there was a high, high risk of implied agency, meaning that really puts you in a position where the consumer, the seller, or landlord, depending on which happened first, um, had some expectations that they probably, um, in their minds, just had because you're a real estate professional, um, that were not true of you as a non-property management professional. So um, there have been some, some bad stories passed around um, the market area with regard to agents who didn't have proper procedures and, and frankly weren't in the property management business um, who were thinking that their agreement with the seller was just to find a tenant and their, their obligation stopped there and the, and the owner um, of course, when those bad situations arise, sometimes, as they often do, um, had a completely different um, set of expectations with regard to their real estate professional and assumed, incorrectly, of course, that they were also capable of property management um, and or uh, the, incurred the liability that a property management professional would incur um, had they listed that property for rent as well. So now, we have a form, and I'm very glad to say it's in your packet. It's uh, standard form 106, 
And I would submit to you guys that um, if you have one of those 486 listings that is currently in MLS under both residential and rental, um, if you don't already have this form in place with your seller slash owner, um, I would make it a high priority. This form is wonderful. Um, they have bolded um, at the top, no management services, including but not limited to the conduct of any credit check and or criminal background check, the preparation of a lease agreement or the collection or handling of any security deposit and or rent payment shall be provided in connection with this agreement. Um, what is so important about this form, much like our short sale addenda that recently came out from the state, it, it's more important that they're outlining what you won't do than what you actually will do because your services are very limited. I mean, it's basically a fine tenant only and I'm not even running an application on this tenant so you cannot hold me uh, liable for whether this tenant um, have, is a registered sex offender or um, doesn't have the income requirements because I'm telling you up front that this is where my services stop. Now, the other thing I love about this form is on the second page under uh, paragraph five services, it goes into um, that this is not a property management services agreement and any lease shall be entered into in the seller's name and the seller further is agreeing that the firm, your firm, has no responsibility with respect to that lease and um, the tenant's performance thereunder. <coughs> Um, property management firms do have some liability in that arena because we run them, uh, the applicants all through um, application processes which um, we then present to our owners and, and we advise them to take or not take an applicant based on these things and you, you are not to be held to that standard of liability which is what I love about this form. Also, I'll just direct your attention to um, directly at five, it also gives the owner the opportunity and um, in, my, in my opinion, I, I would say that you guys would be well advised to, to tell the seller that you would advise them to get property management um, services once you find them a tenant because quite frankly, it, you know how it is, the first second that you don't advise them to do that and to save a dime is the second that that phone call is coming into you regardless of whether you use this form or not. So there's some nice protections in here and it says the firm shall refer any prospective tenants either to the seller, in which case, you know, the seller is incurring the liability of who they choose and that sort of thing, and um, or to the property management firm outlined here. So this is your opportunity to talk to the seller and to decrease your liability by suggesting that they hire a professional if they're not well versed in managing their own properties as well. Um, now, let's talk about the 386 properties in MLS that are for rent, but listed by agents who have less than five properties for rent, um, who we are making an assumption are not property management professionals. Um, in those cases, there is no standard form. Um, so the form that we just talked about is to go part and parcel in conjunction with your listing agreement, and it references that. It's an addendum. The non-form that does not exist um, is for if you did not have the property listed for sale and you had someone that wanted you to just put it in the MLS for rent, but you were not a property management firm and therefore would not be using a management agreement. Um, so there's no form um, and there's a whole lot of liability and um, it would be uh, my suggestion that you either would have an attorney create a form sort of like this one that the state created for us that outlines exactly what you will and will not be responsible for in that event, or um, even better, earn a referral fee and refer that business to a professional property management firm who um, has procedures and risk management in place for all these eventualities um, that you probably don't. And we'll take questions later, but I'm gonna go ahead and let the next speaker come up.